Welcome to this session on Algebra 2 Applications of Linear Systems. So what are we trying to accomplish here today? We're going to be writing and solving systems of linear equations to model and solve real world problems. So the steps for problem solving are to read the problem and identify the two variables in the problem. Your second step is to write the system of linear equations. Your third step is to solve the system using the substitution or elimination method. And your last step is to interpret the solution and answer the question. So our first question, the admission fee at a small fair is $1.50 for children and $4 for adults. On a certain day, 2,200 people enter the fair and 5,050 is collected. How many children and how many adults attended? So first what we want to do is to identify our two variables. They're asking us how many children and adults attended. So that gives us our variables. We're going to use x to represent the number of children who attended and y will represent the number of adults who attended. Now, we're going to get two equations that we have to work with here. So they're, they're telling us how these tickets are related, the number of children and the number of adults, in two different ways. The one thing that they're telling us is that the admission fee was $1.50 for children and $4 for adults, and they collected $5,050. So if I take the number of children tickets and multiply that by $1.50, and the number of adult tickets and multiply that by $4, that should be equal to 5,050. Another way that they show how these two things are related, the number of children and adult tickets, is they tell us that they sold 2,200 or 2,200 people entered the fair that day. So the number of children tickets plus the number of adult tickets should be equal to 2,200. So that gives me my second equation that I'm going to work with. So I have x plus y equal to 2,200. And then I can get rid of these zeros in the first equation and make the first one 1.5x plus 4y equal to 5,050, and the second, of course, is x plus y equal to 2,200. And we're going to use one of our um, ways to solve this. You can use the elimination or linear combination method, or you can use the substitution method, or you can even use graphing. If you're going to use a graphing calculator, though, you have some pretty large numbers there with the 5,050 and the 2,200. So um, you'd really have to adjust your window on your graphing calculator to even see your graph. So I'm going to use, as you know, my, my most favorite method is the elimination or linear combination method. So I'm going to use that one, and I'm going to eliminate the y variable. That means I have to multiply the bottom equation by negative 4, because remember I want opposite coefficients. So. My top equation remains the same of 1.5x plus 4y equal to 50-50. And my bottom one will become negative 4x minus 4y equal to 2200. Adding the two equations together, 1.5x uh, minus the 4 will give me negative 2 and a half x. And of course, my y's cancel. And that's equal to, oops, I forgot to multiply my 2200 by negative 4. So let me do that quickly. I apologize for that. Negative 4 times 2200 gives me negative 8,800. So negative 8,800. So when I subtract those two, that gives me negative 3,750. So dividing both sides by negative 2 and a half, that gives me x equal to 1,500. 
Now I have to find the y value. So it obviously would be easier to substitute my x value into this equation to find y. So I'm going to take my 1500 here and I'm going to substitute it into the second equation for x. So 1500 plus y equals 2200. Subtract both sides by 1500 and we get y is equal to 700. So what do these numbers represent for x and y? We'll go back to where we defined what x and y were. x represents the number of children and y the number of adults. So we had 1,500 children. And 700 adults attended the fair. So if you need to pause, remember you can do so in the bottom left corner. We're going to move on to another question. How many gallons of 20% alcohol solution and 50% alcohol solution must be mixed to get 9 gallons of 30% alcohol solution? So first of all, what are they asking us to find? They want to know how many gallons of 20% alcohol solution and how many gallons of 50% alcohol solution do we need to mix to get this new solution with 30% alcohol. So X is going to represent the gallons of 20% alcohol solution. And Y will represent the number of gallons of 50% alcohol solution. So you gotta create, we need to create two equations here. So first of all, they're telling us that these two gallons of 20% um, and 50% alcohol solution have to total nine gallons. So we know that the number of gallons of 20% solution and the number of gallons of 50% solution have to total nine gallons. So X plus Y is going to be equal to nine. And then they also tell us that the amount of solution, alcohol solution, is going to be 30% in the new mixture. So if we take 20% times X, and remember I'm changing 20% to a decimal in order to use it in my calculation, so that's why I have point 20X, and 50% of the number of gallons of Y so plus 0.50y is going to be equal to a solution with 30% alcohol. But I want that 30% to be of the 9 gallons. So 30% of my 9 gallons. So when I write what this is equal to, it's going to be equal to 30% or 0 0.30 times 9. So I only want 30% um, of this mixture to be alcohol solution. So I have to figure out how many gallons that is, and the way that I do that is by multiplying 9 times 0.3, or 30% of 9. So these are my two equations. There's a couple different things that you could do before you start eliminating a variable. If you don't like working with decimals, you could multiply this equation by 100, um, or a power of 10 to get rid of the decimal points, or by 10. Um, you could do that as well. So either way, um, you could you could do that if you need to. I'm going to rewrite my second equation, multiplying the point three zero times nine, and I'm going to drop the zeros. So I'll have point two x plus point five y equal to point three zero times nine gives me two point seven. So as I said, you can multiply by a power of ten. Um, to get rid of these decimal places if you want. But I'm going to work on, I'm going to leave them and work on eliminating a variable. So I'm going to work on eliminating the x variable this time. And I want opposite coefficients. So if the coefficient for the x here is 0.2 or 2 tenths, then I'm going to need to multiply my top equation by negative 2 tenths. So I'm going to be multiplying by negative 0.2. So that will give me negative 0.2 times x will give me negative 0.2x. 
negative 0.2 times y will give me plus negative 0.2y equal to negative 0.2 times 9 will give me negative 1.8. And then my bottom equation, of course, remains the same. And adding the two equations together, the negative 0.2 and the 0.2 will cancel. The negative 0.2 and the 0.5 will give me 0.3y. And negative 1.8 and 2.7 will give me 0.9. So I get y equal to 3. Now I'm going to use that to figure out my x value. And of course it would be easiest to use this top equation with x plus y equal to 9. So I will have x plus 3 equal to 9. Subtract 3 from both sides and I get x equal to 6. So what does this represent? Well, the 6 represents the number of gallons of 20% alcohol solution. So I have, in, as my final answer here, 6 gallons of 20% alcohol and 3 gallons of 50% alcohol solution. So those are my two answers. Okay, and we're going to talk about one last problem. Mario invested 7,400 in two mutual fund accounts. One account pays 7.5% interest and the other pays 9% in interest. He earns $636 combined from the account. How much should Mario invest in each account? So, um, he invested in two accounts, one that gives 7.5% interest and one that pays 9% interest. And we want to know how much he put into each account. So, we're going to have our x value to represent the amount placed in the 7.5% interest account. And Y will represent the amount placed in the 9% interest account. So, we know a couple things here. One, that the amount that he invested was $7,400. We just don't know what amount he placed in the 7.5% interest account and what amount he placed in the 9% interest. But we do know that these two amounts added together should be $7,400 because that's how much he invested. So that gives us our first equation, x plus y equal to 7,400. And then, that over just a little bit. And then the second thing that they tell us is that he did earn $636 from the account. Again, we just don't know how much came from each account. So we do know that if we take 7.5% times the amount he placed in that account plus 9% times the amount he placed in the 9% interest account, those two dollar amounts added together should give us $636. So that's where our second equation comes from. The 7.5% will become 0 0.075 times that amount plus 0 0.09 times Y should be equal to $636. So I'm going to work on eliminating a variable here. So if I look at my coefficients, it doesn't really matter which one I use. Um, you can, again, eliminate um, decimal points by multiplying by a power of 10 first, if you want. Um, I'm going to work on eliminating the y value. So I'm going to multiply my first equation by negative 0 0.09. So negative 0.09 times x will give me negative 0 0.09x. 
negative 0 0.09 times y will give me plus negative 0 0.09y. And 7400 times 0 0.09 will give me negative 666. And then the bottom equation, of course, remains the same with 0.075x plus 0.09y equal to 636. Adding the two equations together, negative 0.09x plus 0 0.075x will give me negative 0.015x. The y's will cancel. And negative 666 plus 636 gives me negative 30. Divide both sides by the negative 0 0.015, and I get x equal to 2,000. So that is the amount that he placed in the 7.5% interest account. So to get the other amount, the remaining amount, I'm going to substitute into my first equation. So I will have x is 2,000 plus y equal to 7,400. Subtract 2,000 from each side, and we get 5,400. So to write out our answers here, we have $2,000 was placed in the 7.5% interest account. And $7,400, I'm sorry, $5,400 was placed in the 9% interest account. And those are our final answers. And that ends our recording for this lesson on applications of linear systems.